<laughs> hey everyone, it's Sarah, and today I'm talking to you about impulse control issues with your dog and how to curb them. This is my friend Mardika here, who's one of my client's dogs, and he struggles with several impulse control behaviors. Now, if you're wondering if your dog exhibits any impulse control behaviors, think of things like running through the house like a wild dog and using your house as a jungle gym, or maybe stealing food from the kids or off of the countertop, potentially chewing on things like your shoes instead of their toys. These are all behaviors that are frustrating, but are also related to impulse control in dogs. So today I'm gonna go over three super simple exercises to teach you with your dog that you can do to help control their impulse and also help them become better decision makers through thinking rather than just acting. If you do like this video, don't forget to let me know by hitting that like button. Please hit subscribe and ring that bell to receive notification <laughs> when more videos are released just like it. Obviously, we need to get right to work, so we're gonna jump right into the first impulse control exercise, which is involving food, one of the more difficult ones for highly food-motivated dogs like Marty himself. All right, so our first impulse control exercise involves food. Now, for this exercise, I'm just using Marty's basic kibble, what he gets for breakfast as well as for dinner. So no special high-value treat here. It's important that you start with something simple that's not too tempting, like a piece of hot dog or cheese. As you can see, Marty knows that I have food and he's ready and excited. So Marty, come here. Step one of teaching this, you can do this from a sit, a stand, or a down. I find that it's most effective and easiest to do it from a sit because the indicator of whether you're going to move forward or backwards can be their back end going up and down off of the ground. Marty, off, sit. So we're gonna start in a sit. Good boy. And all I'm gonna do is go to put this food down on the ground. It's okay if he lays down as well but you can see his butt comes up, so my hand comes up. I go to put it down again, his butt stays down, that's good. So I'm gonna move even further and let go of it. Good boy! Now, if he goes for the treat, I'm gonna grab it back and block him, because what I want is I want him to get rewarded from my hands, not to take what's on the floor initially. Good sit, good boy. So you can see he's trying really hard, he knows I have the cookie in my hand, but if that butt comes up, the treat goes away. So the butt stays on the ground. I continue to move away. Good. He makes eye contact with me. He gets a reward. But watch out, because chances are when he's done, he's going to jump up and go to take the thing off the floor. It's important that he doesn't get the thing on the floor and self-reward for that behavior of just impulsively taking it. So I cover it up, and he sits nicely. So I'm going to let go of it again. Good boy. And I get that eye contact from him, so he gets a reward. Oh, good boy. He's already picking up on this game, which is great. We don't just take, now he's looking at the food, good. And there's that eye contact that I'm looking for. You can see he's struggling, he's thinking about it, and he made the wrong decision. So when he makes the wrong decision, the treat goes away. Good, now this is really beneficial to a thinking state of mind. You want your dogs to be thinking and not just acting impulsively. Good, as you know, we tend to make some pretty poor decisions when we just act instead of thinking through it. Good job, buddy. Good way to figure things out. Good boy. Now every once in a while, just so the things on the floor don't become forbidden fruit, I'm gonna give him the win of what's actually on the floor. Marty. But only when he makes the right decision. Now this might take you five minutes, this might take you a week. Every dog is different in how quickly they pick up on this and how slowly. Mardika here is really food motivated, so this is tough for him, but he's doing a pretty good job of thinking through different behaviors that might work. Now here, good. I would say that I would accept his down, but you can see he went out of a down thinking that's not what I wanted and back up into a sit. I'll take that. That's some good thought process right there. All right, now as I was saying, every once in a while, give them the win that's on the floor so it doesn't become the forbidden fruit. I'm trying, buddy. Good. That's it. Good boy. Marty eats. Good boy, yay! And that's it. Super simple, easy exercise to do. Now, after you've done several rounds and they leave the basic kibble alone, then you want to up the game and make it just a little bit harder by using a super good boy. Marty eats yummy treat. Um, this is one of my favorite jerky treats right here from Nom Nom, but this is much more high value, so it's a lot harder than it would be just using their basic kibble. So let's see how Marty does with this. You can see he's very impulsive, grabbing at the bag, but that's never going to work. You can grab at that bag all you want. You can try to steal it all you want. That's not the behavior that I want. So let's try something else. 
You can see this is so much harder because of this. This is really good stuff right here. So I'm just gonna start, good, placing it down. Good, eat, good boy, good job, Marty. All right, moving on to drill number two. We're gonna use something of high value that's fun that he really enjoys, and that is his little hedgehog ball. As you can see, he's already fixated on that. He's super excited when he sees this. So we're gonna talk a little bit about how to use toys with impulse control as well. Okay, so impulse drill number two involving something super fun, like a toy. This is a really great exercise when you've got a hyperactive dog that's super ball motivated or toy motivated to teach them a little bit of patience. As you can see, Marty here is super impulsive when it comes to the toys and all he wants to do is grab it. Now you could say I'm kind of teasing it because I'm moving it around, but what I want to do is get him in that thinking state because he really loves to play fetch. Good boy! He's already starting. He loves to play fetch. So in order to play the game, I want him in a calm state of mind and thinking and making some good eye contact with me. So what I'm gonna do to start this off is see if he wants to play. I'm gonna put the ball down once he's calm. <laughs> good, he's in a seated position, that's pretty calm. I'm gonna set the toy down. Good boy, yes! All that eye contact means I wanna play. Now, I'm gonna go for it, and if he goes to grab it as well, my hand's gonna come away, like this. So if the teeth come out like this, my hand goes away. Now you can see Marty's giving it back to me because he wants to throw it, but then he goes to grab it again. Anytime he goes to grab it, I'm not gonna take it. You can see he's putting it back in my lap because he wants me to throw it. So we'll try this again. I'm going for it. Good, he makes eye contact with me instead of grabbing it with his teeth. Now that wasn't good, so we're gonna make it go away. That's not the behavior I want. If he continues bouncing, I'll stand up, but instead he offered me a sit, so we'll try again. Good. Boy, yes, good boy, he's making good eye contact. I'm gonna go to grab it, but he doesn't. <laughs> he doesn't let me. Or rather, he brings out the teeth. Marty, come on, buddy. Good, good job. So we'll call him back in to re-engage. All I wanna do is show him that, hey, come here, bud. I wanna play too, I just don't want his teeth when I go to pick up the ball. Martica, come on, buddy. Good, so here, I'm just gonna let go for a minute. Thank you, you see he drops it in front of me. Marty! Yeah! Good boy! Gets a nice eye contact. Now let's start the game. We'll see if he brings it back this time. Good boy! Where'd you go? There you are! And then he drops it in front of me. So we'll repeat the game again. Now it's important to know that tug, you see him shaking his head, tug and fetch, are two very different games and should be played separately so that we don't end up with teeth on the hand. So here, he tries to grab it, I put it back down again. You can see he really wants me to throw it. He loves playing fetch. Come here, Marty. He's like, maybe the camera guy will play with me. Go get your toy. Where is it? Go get it. Marty. Good boy. We want a different toy to throw. Okay, come here. Good. Now he wants some independent playtime. I can re-engage him. Good. Thank you. Good. Good. That's it. Nope. <laughs> Please take it. Please throw it. That's it. Yes. Good boy. Much better. Yes. Good boy. A little eye contact. After I get that eye contact and he's sitting nice and calmly, I'm going to reward him by tossing that toy for him because he loves to play fetch. But again, if the teeth are involved, the game doesn't continue. You can have some independent chew time if you want. If you want to use those teeth on the toy, that's totally fine like he's doing now. I want to give him the option. Do you want to engage with me and we can play fetch and do it really nicely? Or do you want to have independent play time where you can put your teeth on the toy and chew on the toy without me? So that's exercise number two. Now we've got two toys to toss. What are we going to do, Marty? Uh-uh, we're not going to do that. Nice seated calm behavior instead of jumping because jumping never gets what we want. And then we'll try again. Good boy. Yes, nice eye contact. Good job, buddy. And that's that. So the last exercise that I'm gonna show you, number three, has to do with the crate door. Simple, super exercise that you can utilize during crate training or just in general on a daily basis. It takes very little practice and they pick up on it really, really fast, but it can help you a lot with impulse control, especially with things like bolting in and out of different entryways and doors. All right, 
So for our third and final drill, we are going to work with the crate door. And this is really going to be an expression to the dog of how to wait and stop and think and look for good direction before entering the next threshold. We can do this with any doorway, but it's a super simple practice with the crate. So let me show you how it's done. All right, Marty, you ready? Good boy. Kennel. Good boy. Lots of positive reinforcement for going into the crate, the very first ask. That's very good. We've been working hard on that, haven't we? Now you can see right off the bat, he knows I have food. He already wants to get out. Oh, good sit, good boy. He was clawing at the crate a little bit, and this is a patience game. Remember that you reinforce the behavior based on what your actions are. So right now he's sitting and being good, so I can reinforce that behavior by getting closer to the crate door to open it. But if you open the crate door, whether jumping up like he just was, you're telling him that you want him to repeat that behavior of jumping at the crate door to come out. That's not what we want. We want good thought process ahead of time. Good boy. Good, and this is exactly what I want. I want a nice, seated, quiet, calm. So I'm gonna go ahead and let him out, or start to open the door as if I'm going to let him out. And what I'm looking for is for him to stay in that seated position until this is all the way open, and I use the words F-R-E-E -E to let him come out. Now the whole key is, if he tries to come out before I open the door, I'm simply gonna close the door back again. You can see he's nice and seated, so I'm gonna open this. At any given point in time, if he does go to come out, I'm only gonna close the door enough to where he sits back down. So you don't have to close it all the way every single time. Just close it to the point where they sit back down and they're calm and quiet again, and then start to reopen it. So you can see here, I'm gonna keep the door open for a minute. I might move my hands about as well, just to distract him a little bit. And then once he's been nice and quiet and calm, free. I'm gonna let him out, good boy. And he's in a much calmer state of mind, a much calmer behavior than if I open the crate door when he's clawing and going crazy at it and he just bolts right out. That's all that energy that's gonna throw him into that next environment and lead him to potentially making some pretty poor decisions in that next environment. If you like this kind of video, don't forget, hit that like button, share it with friends, hit subscribe and ring that bell to receive notifications when more content, good boy, just like it is released. If you have any questions about impulse control, don't forget to pop those in the comment sections. If you have other fun games that you play with your dog to help teach them good decision-making skills, pop those in the comments below. I'm always open to creative ideas. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you found some really good value in how to teach your dog few exercises that can help greatly with impulse control.